Hey guys, welcome to Gander Flight. I'm Joshua, and today we're going to be restoring a double bit axe that's been sitting in a chicken coop for 30 years. So I was looking for a next project, and I reached out to some local Facebook groups and asked if anybody had some old rusty tools laying around. And a gentleman contacted me and said, hey, I've got this double bit axe head that's been sitting out in my chicken coop um, since I moved here 30 years ago. I said, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm new at restoring tools, so you know, whatever you got, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. So this is the double bit ax that he got, or that he gave me. Uh, we're gonna go through and, and refurb it as best we can. Um, probably do this in several parts. First part, going through and redoing the, the head. Uh, second part, doing the handle. And the third part, I've got an awesome idea um, for making a sheath. Um, so stick around for that third part, because that's gonna be super cool. But uh, the first thing we're gonna do is get all the dirt and presumably chicken feces off of here. Um, and then we're gonna get it in some evapor rust and get all the rust cleaned off. See if we can see any markings. I don't see any maker's mark or um, marks at all on here. So we'll see. And there's a bit of the, the handle still left inside it. So we'll see what we can do to get this cleaned up and then see if we can find out a little bit more information about this head itself. And get it back into working order. Let's see what's underneath here. This is some of that brush I used on a different project. I'm going to use that first, then fill it up. If you need any more. Now we're just going to let that sit, let the evaporus do its thing. We'll come back and see what it looks like de-rusted. Alright, so it's been about 12 hours. I left it in overnight. And as you can see, there was a lot of rust on there. Let's pull it out and see what is going on. Let's see what it looks like. Looks like there's quite a bit of dirt still on here. Probably should have washed this off with soap and water, not just a cleaning spray. Live and learn. Next time. So I washed it off, did some more scrubbing with a, a br hard bristle brush, and uh, Definitely learned that I need to clean it far better before it ever goes into the evaporust. It's cool you can see the temper lines on the, the edges. But I think I'm going to empty this out. I'll filter that through uh, some coffee filters and use it again later. But pour some fresh stuff in and let it get to work on some more of these rust stops that were underneath more of the dirt. It seemed like there was dirt, rust, dirt, rust. Um, just lots of layers. I mean, this thing's been sitting in a chicken coop for 30 plus years. So, 
Yeah, I'm not seeing any sort of markings, uh, stamps of brand or anything like that. So this may just be a no brand double bit X, but uh, let's keep going and see, see what we can make it look like. If nothing else, it's gonna be a great learning opportunity and uh, something I'm already enjoying. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll get some new vapor rust, let this sit for a couple more hours, hit some more of this rust and then uh, Move on from there. Okay, it's been a few days since I got that all evapor rusted, and now I'm gonna take a wire brush, cut brush to it, and kind of polish it up. You can see it's already starting to, to rust again. Um, so the evapor rust does a good job of taking it off, but there's not a whole lot of protection. So I'm gonna polish it up some, and then we'll sharpen this edge, and then we'll throw some, some oil on here to keep it from rusting some more. All right, so after cleaning this guy up, you can see I've got some hairline cracks here. It goes through on both sides, unfortunately. I need to do some more research and see if this just turned into a piece of wall decor or whether that's still usable. And uh, figure out what I'm going to do from here if it's not. I'm going to continue on and then just make it a piece of, piece of art and not even worry about sharpening it up. <coughs> or if we continue on with the build and use it as a tool. I'll be back. All right, so after doing some research and just thinking about it for a few days, I decided that I'm gonna turn it into a single bit ax with a picaroon on the other side. Um, so I got, traced out the, the design, kind of got the, the shape I'm gonna go for, keeping in mind that the crack is kind of right where I need to terminate. Um, so it was unfortunate. If it had been somewhere else, it would have been a little bit easier to get maybe more of a, a straight shape for the Picaroon. It may have to be a little bit more curved. But we're gonna give it a try, and we're gonna see how it works. If it breaks, it breaks. Uh, maybe that can turn it into a single bit if that happens. Or, you know, if it was a failed project and a learning experience. So let's go get everything ready, and uh, we'll start taking some material off. So I got all the pitting out. I got the shape I want. I don't really like mirror finishes. Um, it's smooth, and so I think I'm gonna leave it as is and maybe force patina with some vinegar bath. And then uh, we'll get it sharpened and then hang the head. So let's see if we can force a little darker patina on here. I think a, a dark gray against the, the new handle I'm working on will look awesome. I'm just gonna pour some vinegar over this, let it set for a little bit. We should be done. All right, so the vinegar did not give me the finish that I wanted, so I'm gonna give some mustard a try. Well, I didn't care how the vinegar turned out or the mustard. So, 
Back to the sandpaper. So here's the finished project. I think uh, it turned out awesome. I can't wait to finish the whole thing and, and try it out. Um, I went as fine of sandpaper as I had. I think I might get something a bit finer and make this a little more polished. You know, I tried to do vinegar and I tried to do some mustard patinas. They didn't turn out well, didn't turn out how I liked. So I might just leave it as is and then uh, oil it and just let it patina over time. We'll see. Uh, still a work in progress and uh, the next video we're going to be working on getting it hung on this handle after we do some modifications to this because it's a hardware store model and uh, it's just covered in gunk and I don't like the color so we're going to be working on that and then we're also going to be working on using some dollar store, not dollar store, thrift store uh, leather belts to make a custom sheath for this guy. So I'm excited to give that a give that a try as well. This one was 99 cents. So check back, and we're gonna be posting that video of those two projects and finishing up this double bit to Picaroon Fire Axe modification. I almost forgot. I want to know what's your opinion. How would you have done this restoration differently? Leave me a comment down below, and don't forget to hit that like. Also subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you know when those next handle and sheath videos come out. And if you're into DIY, I invite you to come check out our group, DIYers, Tinkers, Fixers, and Makers. I'll put a link in the description box below. Well that's all for now. I'm Joshua and you've been watching Gander Flight. Until next time, take care and pay it forward.